This week, we're gonna talk about how finding financial contentment is as much about your mindset as it is about your money. Uh, to that end, I'm gonna analogize us to fish. I'm gonna draw some pictures. Stick around. So our industry does a great job about telling you all sorts of conclusions and answers that they've come to or found, um, but doesn't necessarily do a great job around talking about the concepts that really need to be reflected on as investors to help you find not only financial stability, but really financial contentment, which is as much about mindset as it is about money. I wanna share uh, some things I went over with some clients this week. Uh, that I got good feedback to, and so that I hope would be helpful uh, to many of you. Uh, and I want to start with this. So what is, what is this issue um, that bridges, again, just how much money we have uh, to the mindset? Well, the first reality we need to think about in terms of the brass tax financial aspects is that markets are like gravity over time and that long-term market performance like gravity kind of has a constant result, some long-term averages that continue to appear uh, over time. However, unlike gravity, they don't necessarily hold up over certain periods of time. In fact, if you were to go back over the last 92 years and look at the S&P 500, which has a 10%, 9.99 to be exact, average as of the end of last year, you'd find that the amount of years that had an eight to 10% return were exactly zero. <laughs> so your average never has appeared in a calendar year. Even, and we've talked about this before, if you stretch it out a little bit from five to 10%, it only appears about 10% of the time. Now there are plenty of great years, but there's a number of bad years. Um, and so planning around that, again, using that income-based methodology is one approaches to earners retirement is part of the equation, but it's only part. And here's why, your ability to amass wealth is limited obviously by your ability to save and then time, right? How much of that long-term average are you going to be able to get to experience and how much of that long-term average is going to be able to compound to help you build wealth? And so while we want to certainly help people maximize that over time, like gravity again, it's relatively limited and it can only be part of the equation. So this is where the fish analogy comes in, uh, much like the milk cow uh, analogy, we're going back to the farm, if you will, to help you understand uh, a second component, which is your mindset uh, and how that approaches. Working with people who have a few hundred thousand dollars up to millions and millions upon uh, millions and millions of dollars, I found some constants, which is it isn't the size of the bowl if you want to equate the bowl to how much money, uh, how big your account is, that really drives financial satisfaction and contentment. Now you've seen plenty of studies, like if you make over $72,000 a year, um, there's a lot of diminishing returns that sets in after that. That's certainly a corollary to this. Um, but what about as we get further along? What is, what is as our bowl becomes more defined as we approach retirement? Well, that gets back to us. And what I've found, again, working with clients over time, um, putting apart financial contentment aside is we're a lot like goldfish in that we will grow to as big of a bowl as you put us in. And there's perhaps no greater uh, example of this than the fact that when we sit down with people to talk about planning, we're obviously sitting down with responsible people, we're sitting down with people who've put away some money, um, but when we ask them, what do you spend in a year? What's your budget? 99% of people have no idea. Uh, they know they spend a little less than they make after they've saved what they want to do. There's a few dollars left over. I.e., They've grown to their fishbowl. They've learned to expand their lifestyle to fit the extent of their means. And what we'll do with a lot of these people is, uh, in talking with them is find that they they're don't have that level of security. They don't have that level of contentment. And that gets back uh, to little factors. So at this point, we're gonna cut over to my artwork, uh, which doesn't always make an appearance for good reason, uh, to walk through, again, this analogy of the fish and the fishbowl. So I know many of you are doubting that I have drawn these pictures and are questioning whether an expert was brought in. It's not, this is my original artwork. This, this is a fish in a fishbowl. Um, my daughter would undoubtedly be horrified as all the fins are missing, but I wanted to do it for this concept. So as I was just talking about, the fishbowl is, our means, our wealth, our salary, whatever the case may be at our given point in time in life, and we're the fish. And what happens without a whole lot of intention and discipline is we naturally just grow, even if we're uh, responsible, an irresponsible person would be growing out the top of the bowl, I guess, as a fish. 
to fit in inside the bowl. And that creates on a subconscious level, again, some insecurity. We know that there just isn't a lot of extra room. Um, and we spend, and the reason this is so critical, an inordinate amount of time as an industry and as individual investors focused on the size of the bowl. That matters, it's important. I'm not saying that it doesn't, but what's equally important is the size of the fish in the bowl when what we're really after is point number two, which is this, space from the bowl. How much room do we have to wiggle around inside this bowl? Whether we think about it or not, as I've worked with people, again, irrespective of means, where we found people who have had the most contentment in going through plans is people who are living well within their means. No correlation whether that meant they spent a million bucks a year or they spent $100,000 a year or they spent $50,000 a year. The critical thing was that they had intentionally defined how big they, they their budget was going to be um, and made sure that there was plenty of room within that fishbowl. Knowing that they would like to grow the fishbowl, knowing we're certainly tasked in helping to that end, but understanding that the second part of that equation again is intentionally creating space within the bowl. Why do we invest? Certainly it's about basic needs. If we're a fish, we gotta have a bowl, we need some water, and we need food from time to time. Certainly we may dream of a bigger bowl to the extent that that means vacations or college for the kids. Um, but also, again, it comes back to peace, contentment, and security. And the thing I want to encourage everyone to really do is sit down, find that budget, really intentionally look at what it is that brings you joy, much like the Netflix show about all the junk that we keep in our house, and understanding that that space, that security, that peace that you're looking for is not found in the size of your bowl, but rather how much room you have between your nose and the glass to be able to breathe. So we wanna help you with both, help build that bowl as much as we can within the confines of market gravity, but also help you walk through that path of intentionally understanding what is most important to you, what needs to comprise that bowl to help you live a life of contentment as well. Thank you so much for joining us this, this week. We'll see you soon. Anybody who wants uh, the artwork, feel free to stop by. Thanks.